You may have heard me refer to something called a starter palm throughout this course. Or when we went to set up new projects, you may have seen a dependency called spring dash starter dash whatever, say web for web MVC stuff. So in this section, we're going to talk a little bit real quickly about what starter palms are and how they work. So a starter palm is just an empty jar, really. Its only purpose is to provide the necessary dependencies to work with the library. See it as an opinionated view of what is required to get started with said project. Uh, so again, they're just a set of con convenient dependency descriptors, which at the end of the day really help us avoid a bunch of copy and paste. So we'll look at a demo and we'll jump in and actually see what like the web starter palm provides to us. And if you had to do this on every project that you needed, you would just really get sick of it going into an old project, figuring out all of the dependencies that a web project may need and copying and paste them into the new uh, Maven Palm or build Gradle build file. It just gets to be a real big pain in the butt and we want to avoid copy pasting at any point in a programmer's lifetime because copy and pasting always ends up leading to not only complexity but can lead to errors as well. So you'll see a lot of starter palms went throughout this course and they all start with spring dash boot dash starter dash whatever that palm is. And you can also create your own. We're not going to create one here in this particular demo, but I will link to the documentation. It's really easy to create your own. So say you add your own set of dependencies in-house at, at your place of work or, or locally with what you do. You can kind of create your own and, and, and again, it gives you this nice kickstart to a particular type of project. And then we'll also look at the documentation and see what starter palms are available right out of the box. And there are plenty of them. So let's dive right in. Okay, so here we are in the Spring Boot documentation uh, and there is a starter palm section which I'll go ahead and link to. Uh, some of this up at the top is information that we already covered. But then as you go down, there is a section that lists all of these Spring Boot application starters. And then on the left is the name of the starter, which you will include in your dependencies section. And on the right is a description of what that starter provides. So I'll encourage you to go ahead and look through here and look at all the different starters that are available to you. Uh, if we go down here, we'll see the spring-boot-starter web. And this one we've used a couple times already. And what it has is support for full stack web development, including Tomcat and Spring Web MVC. So that brings in all the good stuff for us to get started with web development. There's also some other ones down here for production ready stuff and technical starters. So at this time, what I wanna do is jump into an actual project and kind of show you exactly how this works. When I first started working in Spring Boot, I thought this was just some kind of magic that I didn't really understand. But once you see it in action, it will probably make a lot more sense. So I'm going to minimize this and actually pull up a project. This is a very, very simple project called Hello Spring Boot. It's just a Maven project. Again, you could do this in Gradle, whatever. Uh, the only uh, facet that I, that I chose was a web project. So what happens when we do that is it brings in this dependency here. You can see our spring-boot-starter-web is a dependency in this project. So what actually happens when we do this? When we build this, if we look over here at our external libraries and start to go down through here, we'll see, hey, there's Spring Boot. This is the particular version of Spring Boot that we're using. 
But then there's this other one here, this Spring Boot Starter Web. So let's drill down into this. So this, this actually gives us a little insight into what is going on here. So there's a manifest file, a spring.provides file, but if we dive into this folder here, we're gonna see a POM properties, just some basic properties about this. And then we're gonna see another POM file. So if we start to dig into this POM file, again, remember a POM file is just a Maven build directive saying, hey, these are properties that we're gonna use. These are dependencies that this project is dependent upon. So in this one, now we start to see some more dependencies. So there's a dependency on, on Tomcat, on Jackson, on Hibernate, on Spring Core, some logging stuff, web, web MVC. So as you can see, if then, you know, there's a Spring Boot um, starter here, so if we were to jump into starter, which is right here, then there's more dependencies that we kind of need to get going. Things for like Spring Boot and auto configuring and logging and core. So all this is, remember, is a way to start a particular project and provide all of the dependencies that we would need. You really don't want to have to set this up yourself and figure out everything that is involved in a web project. So Spring Boot does that using starter palms.